On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're in Chicago, Illinois, visiting the home of interior designer Caroline Turner, who prior to launching her own firm, worked with top designers like Kelly Wurstler and Nate Berkus. Raised in the South and now living in the Windy City, Caroline blends classic inherited pieces with youthful style to create a space that is both detailed and approachable. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. To shop items inspired by this and other Homeworthy episodes, be sure to check out the product links below for amazing furniture, accessories, and more. Hi Homeworthy, I'm Caroline Turner. Welcome to my home in Chicago. Let's take a look around. I'm Caroline Turner, I'm an interior designer and I own Caroline Turner Interiors. We are in Chicago in Sheridan Park in my 1914 walk up. So it was deep in COVID the first time I came here. So we were fully masked up. It was June or April actually of 2020. And um, it was very dark. All of the wood was had been redone. So it wasn't original and it was like an espresso color that just made the space that's already not huge feel a lot smaller. So I came in and wanted to brighten everything up. There was also a lot of excessive built-ins that just felt like very heavy. So for example, in this room, I ripped out a lot of this whole wall. It was originally like wood paneling and I just sort of simplified down to the brick fireplace just because that aesthetic is a bit more my style. This is my living room, which is also attached to my sunroom. These are probably my favorite rooms in the house. This room especially because it just, this is where I do most of my living. So I really want to focus on antique and vintage when I'm doing my personal homes as well as our clients' homes. So there is a great mix of antique and vintage throughout the whole house. So this sofa was actually originally a Pottery Barn sofa because the budget was not great when I first moved in. And so I kept it for a couple of years. It just was not wearing that well. And I've always been obsessed with this fabric. So I just decided I would bite the bullet and do the whole sofa in a pattern. And while clients tend to get nervous about that, I always recommend it. I find that it is the most durable and it literally hides everything. Forget a white sofa and go with a pattern sofa. The fireplace is one of the focal points of this room. And so I didn't, I wanted it to sort of be more about the form and the shape of it, which is why I ended up doing it white. Again, it was originally sort of covered in this crazy dark wood all over the walls. So we German smeared the top and then just painted white and black. It unfortunately doesn't work. I've tried to have it fixed many times, but it's still beautiful to look at. And I think it really helps this room feel like home. The coffee table was one of the first things I bought actually when I moved into the house. Um, I purchased it on Cherish and it was a splurge at the time for me, but I think when you're buying especially antique and vintage pieces, if you're looking at materiality, stone is always one of the things that is worth the investment because it's never going to degrade or break down over time and it is classic. I'm a big coffee table book person, what designer isn't, so I find that I switch these books out a lot based on what's really inspiring me at the moment. This little lamp is actually great because it is uh, wireless. And so I just charge them and dot them all over my house for when it's nighttime. This little bone box I actually found in Morocco. And I just think it has the sweetest little details, almost this like little top I love. Um, and then I love a good candle and especially mint. I know mint is kind of like, some people love it, some people hate it, and I love it. Art is so personal, and so when I was picking art for this spa, I didn't want it to compete with the sofa, but I did want it to have sort of its own presence. These pieces are by Andy Blank, and I love them because this is actually canvas, and then they sort of just glued it to be wavy, and I just think it really is something that I haven't seen before, and adds a level of personality without taking away from the rest of the space. The number one question everyone always has is, where is your TV? And it's right in here. And it's a little small, but it works for me. I love it. And this piece is actually really special because I was crawling Craigslist to just try to find anything that I could fill this house with. And I came across this piece. Um, a woman in Barrington had it made and was selling it for $400. So I snapped it up, had it U-hauled, and it holds so much. And it's easily one of my favorite pieces in the house. 
I think every house needs a pedestal or multiple. These are from Mainly Baskets. I love wicker, even though we're very far from the beach, but I think they add a really nice level of height and also just an aesthetic value that you really can't get anywhere else. Okay. the. The sunroom, probably my favorite room in the house. This room was originally inspired by Cameron Diaz's office in The Holiday. The olive green velvet drapery, the black and the white and the pink. And this was originally my office, so I had it set up with a desk and a chair, but when we moved into our CTI offices, I transitioned this to be a little bit more livable for me. It's also where we film all of our TikToks. And then all the pieces in the space are very special to me. The coffee table is 1940s French, and I just love sort of the scroll ironwork. The rug, I actually personally picked up in Morocco on a trip with some friends. We got to go to a Moroccan rug shop and look through thousands of rugs. I picked up about 14, and this is one of them. And then I love this little sort of vignette over here because this olive jug and then the little table and the little lamp, I feel like just creates such a sweet moment. And I really think we need to take more advantage of a pattern shade. Um, this Bar cart was another Facebook Marketplace snag, and the woman really did not know what she had, and she sold it to me for $90. Finally, what all of my friends call the tooth, which I did not know when I bought it, but now it is called the tooth, um, this plaster shade. I think it just, I just love a plaster light. I will never not love a plaster light. And so I thought it really made all the space come together without taking away from any of the other elements. On my entry, and while this is a fairly small space, it is your first impression. So I wanted to make sure that there were some big, impactful design decisions. This striped wallpaper, I felt like, really worked with the rest of the house and is geometric enough that it doesn't take away from some of the other elements. Every single piece in this room, except for the light fixture, is antique or vintage that I personally picked up. This, originally a candelabra, now coat rack, um, I believe I got on like Facebook Marketplace. This mirror was from Cherish and was originally for a client that didn't want it. So now it's in my house. Um, the this sort of table area, I love. I love walking in and seeing this. This is one of my favorite pieces I've ever picked up. I think it was $30. And some people won't buy things when there's chips and sort of decay, but that's personally my favorite thing about secondhand antique and vintage. Like I want to keep the errors and mistakes because that's what makes it so interesting. And then because this entry is so close to so many other rooms, again, I wanted to make sure it really played well with others. So as we're transitioning into the bedroom, you can see that we really move into a more floral space. My intention for this space is I wanted to wake up feeling like I was in a garden surrounded by flowers, and I think I achieved that. I wake up really happy in this room every day, which is not what everyone can say. So, also because the wallpaper was the first selection in this space, I didn't fairly neutral everywhere else. Some of the pieces were originally from my other apartment, so I kind of had to work with them. Um, the nightstands, funny story, I actually bought one originally on Facebook Marketplace or something, because my first apartment in Chicago was so tiny I could only have one. And then I scoured the internet for a year to find a match, and they are a perfect pair from completely different sides of the US. So I lacquered both of them, and now they're some of my favorite pieces. This mirror is actually also interesting because this was originally above my dining room buffet, and I ripped out a bunch of woodwork in there, but because it's original mercury glass, I didn't want to get rid of it. So I turned it into a full-length mirror with a cute little bow. Um, and then the bedding is actually from Casa de Linos in Greece. I've had this bedding for like three years and it's held up so incredibly well. I recommend it to all of our clients. I also think, again, a nice sort of like light pattern, which is what I consider a stripe, brings in another element and it keeps everything from feeling a little too sweet. So all the woodwork was original from when I moved in, but the previous owner had sort of restained it in espresso color, so I didn't feel too bad painting it. Um, but one of my favorite things when I was really looking at the house was how the crown crawled up onto the ceiling. I think that's not something you see every day. And when I was looking for a house in general, the architectural details were probably the most important thing. You can make any space beautiful, but a white box is gonna be a lot more expensive than a original home with original details.
This is a piece I picked up when I was, I think, shopping with an intern a couple of years ago. I just, she was shoved in a corner and I kind of felt bad for her. So I rescued her and brought her here and I just think it feels very feminine energy, which I like. These are plaster molds that I actually picked up in Detroit on a job and I just thought they were so special. I have no idea what year they're from. I don't know anything about them, but it felt like it had added a level of character that just could not be replicated. And then I added the black bows because I wanted there to be like a tie to the black nightstands and again, still keep that sort of feminine energy. I grew up in a very small town where there are not interior designers. That is not a job. So when I went to school at Auburn University, I originally went for occupational therapy, which if you know me, you know that's so funny. I could never do that job. First semester, I already knew it wasn't gonna work. So I was talking to someone and she was like, what about interior design? I was like, is that a real job? But I joined, I got in, and it just really could not have been a better decision for me. I um, then sort of going into my so junior year, I went to work for Kelly Wurstler in LA, which was probably the biggest, best experience of my entire life. I love being able to tell people that she's incredible, because she really is. She has the um, more creativity oozing out of her finger than most people do out of their whole bodies. Um, and then after that, I went to work at Nate Burkus as an intern. The woman who actually who hired me at Kelly Wurstler then hired me at Nate Burkus. I was there for a while. I then was hired by Kara Mann, worked there, got some commercial experience under my belt, and then I went back to Nate Burkus. And then finally, when we parted ways, I started my firm five years ago next week. When you're working with clients on homes or commercial there's so many different opinions and so when I'm really able to just be in my creativity and not really worry about what anyone else thinks I think that's ultimately when I do the best design it's always interesting because people say more about this home than they do any other job we've done that have much bigger budgets and I think it's just because you can feel the personality because this really is my home down this hallway and so this art I love because I um, I originally picked up some wallpaper from Facebook marketplace then you can tell this is hand sponge painted which I think is so cool the wallpaper was supposed to go in this hallway there was not enough so plan B I decided to make pieces of art out of them and you can see I did different I sort of framed out different parts of the wallpaper for each one and I've never seen anything else like it we keep going. Oh, and I should mention this chandelier was a find also during COVID. I met someone in the Lowe's parking lot and it was originally like pink and green and white and had been in the little girl's room. And so I did some cherry red spray paint and voila. Now on to the bathroom. So this space was a full gut and I actually didn't do it right when I moved in. Um, it was beige and very sad 2000s. And so when I was doing this, budget was not amazing. So I wanted to make sure that I was really putting my money in the places that I recommend putting my client's money as well. So this vanity was made by my woodworker and I designed it. I went with a Carrera marble because it's the most affordable and really it's just extremely durable. I did polish nickel in here because Personally, I only work with polished nickel and unlacquered brass. Polished nickel tends to be a lot easier to match because brand to brand, it's pretty consistent, whereas unlacquered brass is just not that way. So I decided to do polished nickel in here. Some of my favorite elements, these Kinkeldy sconces that I found on Etsy, um, they just let off this sort of like beautiful sparkle. And again, it feels very feminine and girly. This is actually a medicine cabinet. I'm scared to open it. There's a lot in here. Um, but I love it. I love products. So it's perfect for me. Um, and then if you know me, you know I'm obsessed with taking baths. So this is my bathtub. I literally am here every day. <laughs> um, I've sort of created a ritual for myself transitioning from work to home. And this is how I do it. And I just love, I did end up going with a slipper clawfoot tub because it just gives you like a lot more depth. If you're a bath taker, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I did these curtains just because I sort of wanted to feel enveloped. This piece is maybe my favorite piece of art I own. 
I, it makes me laugh every day. I actually picked it up just this piece of paper in New Orleans on a trip and then had it sort of floated framed. And again, I just love it. And then this piece was a piece I picked up, I think like in an antique store in Michigan. And I just love the little guys fly fishing because it reminds me of my dad and my grandfather. On to the dining room. So this is the most moody room in the house. And I think every house needs at least one moody room. Uh, the walls are Sulking Room Pink by Farron Ball. And I will not lie to you, that is literally why I chose it. Because I love to sulk. And so I thought, that's perfect for me. So this space has seen a lot of dinner parties. My friends and I love to throw a good dinner party. So I wanted to make sure there was adequate seating and that people want to stay for hours and hours and hours. So these chairs are extremely comfortable. And then I added a sofa so that way when people are sort of like done with dinner and retiring, they can all still hang out in here if they want. This piece of art is actually made by someone I found on Facebook Marketplace. And then I, they weren't doing exactly what I wanted stylistically, but I could tell they could. So I sort of micromanaged it. And then this is what came out of it, which I love. We do these a lot in multiple different colors and high gloss for clients because it doesn't take away from the rest of the space, but it adds a crazy level of texture. These lights are from Murano, Italy. They're Murano glass. I love Murano glass, like have a love affair with it. The way that it ricochets light is unlike any other lighting. You really can't find these details in current production pieces unless they're coming direct from Italy. This wall when I moved in was really, really dark wood and it was actually all the way to the ceiling. And then the mirror from my bedroom was back here. And it just felt very heavy and it sort of took over the rest of the space. So I did what we call drenching, which is where you have everything in the room the same color. There's actually an incredible amount of storage in here, which is really good when you're working with my amount of square footage. I shove everything in here. And then I love sort of these original glass cabinets. They, I have china on one side and then some sort of like keepsakes and glassware on the other side. And I love being able to show off pieces without them being in a fully open bookshelf because it just gives you a little bit less visual clutter. I've said Facebook Marketplace a lot in this video, but these are from Vintage Play Settings in Chicago from Facebook Marketplace. They're actually originally used in like a 90s Versace show. And so when she told me that, I was like, oh, sold, I'll take them. And I just feel like uh, color wise and stylistically, it really works with sort of like the pink moodiness. Um, I also have my grandmother's china, which my grandfather actually bought in Germany when he was in the Vietnam War and brought back from her. And it is just so sweet, sort of this gold detailing. They really don't do it like this anymore. And then one of my favorite things, I actually don't drink anymore, but I have a lot left over from remnants of life of drinking. These Estelle colored glass um, wine glasses, I still put ginger ale in them. <laughs> But I just love a colored glass. I feel like it really adds like a fun touch to an everyday experience. I personally love to host. I feel like I need to do it even more than I already do. I have a great group of girlfriends and we just love to come here and order pizza and hang out. I am not a cook. Dinner parties do not include me serving food, um, except what I can order on DoorDash. But this room really just like envelops you in sort of this warm feeling and people want to stay for a really long time, which is probably the best compliment I could ever get. This piece I actually purchased my first two weeks in Chicago. Um, it's mid-century modern wood, burl wood piece. But what I did not know is that the woman who owned it previously was a smoker. So <laughs> I can't put anything in here or it smells like smoke. It used to be in this closet. So when I transitioned, as I was getting it out of my house, it was too heavy. So I gave up and I put a, a tablecloth over it actually from Zara, I think. And it has sort of like this brocade detail. And when I did that, it was really just a quick fix. And now I love it because I set things up for serving here. Like often I'll do food on this side and drinks or dessert on this side. The creamy white on this side works really well with the creamy white on this side and creates a beautiful level of balance. This dining table actually came from the same place that the armoire in my living room did. I was leaving, I was walking out, and I noticed that she had a tablecloth over something, and I was like, oh, what is that? And she was like, oh, it's a table that I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I was like, can I have it? 125, sold. So I took it, and actually, I personally stripped the entire thing. So it was originally sort of this really dark, very traditional 
more than a stain, like a lacquer on top. And then the this base and legs were black. And that just didn't feel right to me. So I hand scraped the entire thing. It took me like three days. It creates a level of character that I feel like in a new piece you just can't get. It also is great because I don't have to worry about coasters and spills because the table is aging with time and that's what I want it to do. The chairs are fully upholstered because I really wanted them to be extremely comfortable and I wanted people to stay here for hours and hours. On the table, I have some candelabras that my mom gave me. And then this silver bowl, I actually picked up in Morocco. And I just filled with some Trader Joe's fl filler flowers, which I actually personally think are sometimes better than their regular flowers. Hot tip, not entirely environmentally friendly, but flower foam it saves my life constantly. And that's how I was able to make this arrangement. And again, this is all in the pursuit of making the space feel really warm and cozy. And I love the level of light it lets off because it's not super bright. And so it really makes this space feel um, sort of dark and sexy. Tapestries are one of my favorite things to look for on Facebook Marketplace because again, people really don't know what they have. So I found this piece and I love it. I love the hunting dogs that are in it because I'm originally from the South. Um, and so I just had it framed and centered really the whole room around it. Now onto my kitchen. So like I said, I don't cook, but I know how to heat things up. So I just still do still spend time in here. I did the cabinets a dark green, actually Jasper by Sherwin-Williams, and I personally painted them, which was a mistake. Um, but I love the color still, even four years later. These floors were the only floors that were different from the rest of the home. So you can tell sort of their, the plank size is smaller, and it just generally is um, in worse shape than the rest of the home. And I didn't love that you could tell the difference, so I figured we'll paint a checkerboard on it and no one will notice. And it's really truly become probably everyone's favorite part of the house, so it was a happy accident. I picked up this butcher block rolling table, which I love because I like that I can, if there's a bunch of people in here, I can roll it one way or the other. Picked it up on Facebook Marketplace, it weighs about 500 pounds. <laughs> Six men had to bring it up my stairs, but I love that you can cut directly on it. You can cook if someone did cook here directly on it. Um, and then this light is a new addition and I love her. She is from Pookie Lighting in the UK actually. And it's a Verdigris, which is my favorite finish I think that's ever existed. And I thought it worked really beautifully with the dark green in the rest of the space. Just like my bathroom, I did Carrera countertops mainly for budget, but also because I liked the brightness that it brought to these dark green cabinets. And then I did a beadboard backsplash because I just felt like tile might feel like a little bit too much and I wanted this to feel, again, fairly historically accurate. So I went with beadboard. And then the faucet is actually from a company in Morocco and it is unlacquered brass. And I did unlacquered brass knobs to sort of bring all of that together. And then I love doing something sort of different and interesting in a kitchen. So I hung this very ornate mirror and I think it really completes the space. So when I originally purchased the home, behind here is a closet in my closet and it's double depth. So I was going to break out this wall and create a pantry. That went out the window for a couple of reasons. And so I just put up some shelves from CB2, which really do function completely fine and have styled them out to be sort of livable, but also pretty to look at. And then also this is my trash. And everyone's always like, where's your trash? Well, it's in the laundry hamper. Now on to outside. This is a space that I really spend a lot of time in. When I was, when I purchased, we were in COVID. And so that was one of my biggest requirements was a larger outdoor space. Um, I styled the space out with pillows that I picked up from Morocco. And while I never recommend a matching set of furniture ever, outdoor is where I tend to bend that rule, especially in a smaller space. I find that the same pieces of furniture really bring a level of cohesion, but it's not sort of overwhelming to the eye. This coffee table, say it with me, Facebook find. I love it because it sort of mimics a Verdigris, just like the light in the kitchen. And I love a lemon, if you can't tell. 
And this piece was newly acquired. I love it because it can be a potting stand. Also, when I do fresh flowers, this is where I cut them. And it can serve as a bar when my friends come over. I love to read. I've actually read almost 60 books this year. So I read a lot out here. This is also Piper's favorite place to be. So we really just spend a lot of time hanging out in the sun. Um, I also, whenever we have a dinner party, we inevitably end up out here. It just happens that way. Especially because in Chicago, there's only so many months you can take advantage of and we really tried to. The lantern was really the first thing I picked in the space and it was to create a vignette. I almost wanted it to feel like a real living room out here and I feel like that helps achieve that. It has almost like faceted glass so it lets off a nice level of light and it just brings almost like a New Orleans French vibe to the space that I feel like it was missing. My closet, I think this is really every woman's dream to have a whole room that is your closet and I'm living it. So as you can tell, I love shoes, I love clothes, I love bags, and actually have extremely bad ADHD, extremely bad. So my object permanence, which means like you don't remember that you have things if you can't see them, hence everything is out in this space. And while I would love to be one of those girlies that everything's closed and perfect, I would forget everything I own. So I also did this sort of hanging rack because I'm a bit of a psychopath and like to plan my outfits for the week. So this is where they all get lined up to make sure I'm making the best use of my time. And then one of the most recent additions to this space is the wallpaper. And it is Pierre Frey. It looks like it's sort of embroidered almost. And I stretch in here every morning. And so I lay and look up at the wallpaper. It just makes me really happy. And then the lantern was acquired, I believe in France, from one of my um, antique dealer friends. And I love this sort of sweet little loop. Ugh, you just don't get that anymore. And then the little balls on the bottom. I always love that in any sort of light. Um, and then the rest of the space was really just clothes and then my bag wall. This bag I love, it's originally from the 1960s and it has even like a little tag that says that it's from Miami in here. Um, and I, old women, <laughs> always stop me like, where'd you get that bag? But I just love it. I think it adds, just like there's wicker all over my house, it adds a really beautiful level to every outfit. And then this bag I actually got when I was traveling in Italy recently. One of my friends said it looked like a trash can, but I love it. And it's suede and leather and God, they just make goods over there so much better than we make them here. Um, also, one of the pieces that everyone always pulls for is this Mongolian bag. I kind of look like I'm carrying Piper around when I go out with it. But again, I mean, how can an outfit be bad with that bag? So the shelves were a remnant from my old apartment and I just didn't have the heart to get rid of them. So I did these little containers from the container store. They really need to have labels. But this is where I keep all of my like daily things, pajamas, all of that. And then in here is socks, bathing suits, that kind of stuff. And then sweaters, if you don't know, you can't hang them. So this whole sort of um, shelf became sweaters and jeans. And it's really revolutionized the way that I get dressed. The fact that I can come in here, see everything. It takes me like 10 minutes where it used to take me 30. So I really think it was probably the best thing I could have done. Everything needs to be out. So my little sunglasses collection and blue light glasses and then I've recently become really into perfume so this is what my favorite right now it's from Fern they only make a certain amount of bottles and they sell out and I'm just kind of love that kind of stuff and I cannot explain it but it's literally the best scent that I have ever smelled I'm wearing it right now um, and then this antique gilded mirror I think really brings like a level of character and vintage into a space that's kind of lacking it otherwise Home to me means the embodiment of my own personal style. The inside of this home is like the inside of my brain. It's a place where myself and my family can feel relaxed and comfortable and retreat after a long day. Well, Homeworthy, that's my tour. Thanks so much for coming and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.